about um, bone physiology. So this is how bones are built and how they're maintained. Um, we've already learned in class about bone anatomy and um, learning the different names of the bone. So we'll start off, um, I'll start off by saying that if you're a student in my class, you should have access to this um, presentation. And on that presentation at the bottom, you will see notes about what terms I expect you to know on each slide. Also, um, the videos that I have embedded, I expect you to watch as well. So you'll have to pull up the original presentation so you can do that. So, um, so um, if we took a picture of um, a cross section of, uh, of a typical bone, um, we would see that the bone is covered by a, um, a uh, thin layer of tissue called the periosteum. That's a membrane that covers the bone. Um, on the inside of the bone, there is bone marrow. The outside of the bone, there's a layer of bone that is bone tissue that is called compact or hard bone. Um, sometimes it's also called cortical bone. Sorry, there's so many names for all these. And then on the inside, especially on the ends of the bones, um, of these long bones, you will see there's a bone that's called spongy bone or trabecular bone or sometimes called calcaneus bone. So um, also this is where the cartilage would be. And cartilage, um, as you know, is, is a uh, type of uh, connective tissue that, um, that cushions um, the joints where the bones rub together. So if you looked at um, bone and you looked at it um, under the microscope, um, we learned this when we learned histology, that you would see something that almost looks like uh, tree trunk rings. And um, the um, basic unit of bone tissue is called an osteon. Everything is oste, osteo um, with bones. So um, the periosteum you can see here, you need to know that. Um, and here is the compact bone that is in this area. Here is the trabecular bone or spongy bone. Um, inside each of the osteons, there is a canal. And in that canal, and it's called the Herversion Canal, and in that canal you will find a, an artery and a vein and a nerve that goes through there. Osteocytes are found in these little I kind of think of them as like little caves uh, called lacunae. Um, and inside here, you will find little nestled in this, um, this bone material are osteocytes. Um, and remember that bone tissue is has a solid matrix. It has a mineral matrix. And so bone is, um, but bone is living um, material that's constantly changing. We're going to learn how that is uh, in, as we go along. So if you went to the butcher shop and uh, you wanted to make some homemade soup stock or something like that, you would probably buy some of these nice bone um, that have marrow on the inside. That is the stuff that really makes the broth really good. Um, and these are cross sections of bone, so you can see the compact bone around, and then inside you see the bone marrow. Here this is a lengthwise cut of a bone where you see um, the bone marrow. And the bone marrow is important because that is where our blood cells are made inside the bone marrow. So we, um, as we, um, as we get older and older, we start out with a lot of red bone marrow, and the red bone marrow's primary job is to, as I said, make different um, blood cells. But that is generally replaced by a fatter bone marrow that's called yellow bone marrow, and yellow bone marrow does not make. Um, different kinds of red blood cells. So you can see the different kinds here. This is spongy red marrow, here is yellow marrow, and here is compact bone that you're going to see around the outside. So the process of making different kinds of blood cells um, is called hemopoiesis. And hemopoiesis happens in the bone marrow, in the red bone marrow. And there are cells in the red bone marrow that make, um, some of them end up making red blood cells, whose job it is to carry oxygen. Some of them end up making white blood cells, whose job it is to fight infection. And um, another type of actually a cell fragment are called platelets, and platelets' jobs is to actually produce a clot.
So we've heard a lot about stem cells in the news and how stem cells can make different types of cell. You do not have to know this whole structure. I just wanted to show you that there are hemopoietic stem cells in our bone marrow. And those cells end up becoming all the different types of blood cells in our blood. And so that's a very important function of bone in those in those uh, uh, for those stem cells. Now, um, sometimes people have to have bone marrow transplants. So, for example, if someone were to have a blood cancer, like a cancer of uh, leukocytes, which is a certain type of blood cell, um, these are some leukocytes, or uh, cancers of lymphocytes, which is another type of white blood cell. Sometimes what happens is is that um, some very strong uh, medication or sometimes um, some radiation destroys the, um, the patient's um, bone marrow so that all those cancer cells are destroyed. And what happens is sometimes people can donate their own bone marrow um, and they can um, have it kind of cleaned and, and, and filtered to get rid of the cancer cells. And sometimes donors, people who are related um, or have uh, similar um, uh, antigens on their surface will donate some blood marrow and they would donate that blood marrow to the recipient and then the recipient would be able to repopulate their own blood cells after um, kind of bringing them down to the to the brink of of um, not having those cells to try and and get rid of all the cancerous cells, so that's what a bone marrow transplant is. And there's some very heroic people out there who are donating bone marrow to people that need it, and we're very thankful for that. So, guys, there are basically three types of bone cells. There are osteoclasts there are osteoblast and there are osteocytes so what help what helps me remember the difference is osteoblasts build osteoclasts breakdown and osteocytes site means cell are the cells that maintain so you can kind of think of this as this is actually a process called bone remodeling um, you know you can imagine if you wanted to remodel your home, you might have to break down some walls before you build some. And that's very similar to what happens in bone remodeling. So what happens is um, bone needs to grow, and uh, especially in, in young people. And in all of us, bone needs to repair. And so um, that process is going to be responsible for a process called bone remodeling. So what happens is, is that you have the osteoclasts, are, those are the breakdown bones, and they are going to, to remove some bone or resorb some bone, all right? And then the osteoblasts are um, activated, um, and all these are chemical signals osteoblasts build. And so those osteoblasts produce the matrix. The matrix is the hard material that actually forms the bone tissue. And so the bone is formed. And so that's the process of bone remodeling. Once those cells stay um, inside the little lacunae, they actually mature into what we call osteocytes. And so these videos that I have posted over here um, you can find those on the um, actual uh, uh, presentation itself that I've shared with you, and you need to, to watch those videos. That will help you. So what is osteoporosis? Um, osteoporosis is a, 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 is a problem with bone density decreasing. People can have um, a genetic um, uh, predisposition to osteoporosis. Sometimes um, certain medications or disease will um, uh, predispose people to that. Sometimes unhealthy diets, not enough exercise, so there are lifestyle things as well too. But you can see what happens is in the process of osteoporosis, healthy bone becomes less dense. And because of that, that less dense bone makes those people very prone to fractures. So here we've actually have some people who have had some fracturing of their neck vertebra 
due to osteoporosis. So how does bone heal itself? So we, we actually um, would see something like this if you had a fracture of a bone. And again, here is a video here. I want you to make sure that you watch. But what would happen is, is that if you had um, a bone that would break, the bone tissue, remember on those aversion canals and also here, right here, we're seeing in the bone marrow, there is a rich blood supply. And so the first thing that has to happen is the blood has to clot. And um, you might see um, a swelling in your in your in your area if you actually broke your bone. So then what happens is that there would be a callus that would formed, and um, cartilage would be laid down first. And um, this is uh, there were some some fibers in there that toughen up the bone, and then the process of um, the um, calcaneus or spongy bone is laid down and then the process of the compact bone would be replaced. And actually the place where the actual fracture was, it's actually a little bit thicker. Um, it actually kind of makes it better than it was before and so people that can look at uh, an x-ray can see where a fractured bone was repaired. So bone in fetuses, um, as we are developing, um, in our mother's wombs is actually formed in two different ways. One way is called intramembranous ossification, and that's just one type of uh, ossification, the way that bones are formed. And the other way that they're formed is called endochondral ossification. I want you to know both terms. Um, you don't need to go into the detail in my class about this. I am going to talk about endochondral ossification because this is the way that long bones, like your femur and your humerus, are made as you are a developing fetus. So what actually happens is these bones are laid down um, in fetal uh, uh, tissue it as actually cartilage. And then the cartilage is replaced in a systematic way with actual bone material. The very um, last thing that is replaced is there is a little plate in the ends of long bone that is called the growth plate. And that is actually the place where new bone is laid down and bone is growing. So if you're a young child and you break a bone and it's in your growth plate, that's a, a more complicated fracture. So bone formation, intramembranous ossification is primitive connective tissue. And this is the way that the flat bones of the skull and the mandible um, are formed. Long bones, as I said, are formed with endochondral ossification, as well as um, the um, axial skeletal bones and the pelvis. So one of the things that's very important in bones is you have to realize that bones are a storage place for minerals. Minerals like phosphorus and minerals like calcium. And we need calcium in our bodies for um, lots of different things. We need it for muscle contraction. We need it for communication in the body. And so we need um, calcium in our bones to make them strong. So there is a homeostasis. There is a balanced network about keeping calcium balanced in our body. We don't want too much in the bone and we don't want too much in the blood. So there is a balance of this. And there are actually two different hormones called parathyroid hormone and another hormone called calcitonin. And these work in opposite uh, ways to control the calcium levels in the blood and in the bone. So for example, if you had rising blood calcium levels, that would then stimulate the hormone calcitonin. Calcitonin would then stimulate the the bone to start to deposit um, more calcium in the bone. So in other words, the high calcium levels in the blood end up being deposited into the bone. If then too much calcium is deposited in the bone and the blood levels of calcium start to fall, another hormone called parathyroid hormone releases um, uh, into the blood and parathyroid hormone stimulates the osteoclast. Remember they are the breakdown um, cells in the bone to break down bone and release calcium into the blood and then that would increase the blood calcium levels. So there is a quick video for that if that if that will help you.
So what is a tendon? A tendon is a type of connective tissue that connects a bone to a muscle. So we can see a tendon here. We're going to do some dissection soon and you'll be able to see a tendon. They're, they're very beautiful. And um, one end of the tendon is actually um, inserted on a bone that doesn't move. And then the other um, tendon is actually, uh, the other part of the end of the tendon is actually attached to a muscle. So what is a strain? A strain is an injury to a muscle or a tendon. So a muscle strain, and I highlighted a T there for T for tendon. So a muscle strain can be an injury to a muscle or a tendon. A lot of times it, it could be an overuse thing. It could be an overstretching thing. A ligament is actually very tough connective tissue that connects a bone to another bone. So our patella or our kneecap is actually kind of a, a free floating bone and it is uh, connected by very, very important ligaments that connect the kneecap um, to the femur up here and to the tibia and the fibula over here. So um, we hear sometimes about athletes having an ACL tear and an ACL is one of the ligaments that's in, um, that's in the knee that sometimes with quick lateral movements gets torn. A sprain is a damage to a ligament. So ligaments um, often take a, heart, a longer time to heal because they have a little bit less blood supply and that, that can mean a longer healing time. There are actually five types of bones that you will see. So there's long bone like the humerus. There are short bones like some of your bones in your carpals or your wrist. There are flat bones like your sternum. There are irregularly shaped bones like your vertebra. And then there are sesamoidal shaped bones. And the patella is, the kneecap is a good example of that. So you just need to know all those names, uh, all those types of bones in my class. We also need to know the different types of joints. So a joint is any place that two bones come together. We have pivoting joints. We have ball and socket joints like in our humerus and also in our femur that allow us to um, rotate in 360 degrees. We have a saddle joint where your thumb um, inserts on your um, meta, um, uh, metacarpals here. That is a saddle joint. We have a condyloid joint. These are the joints between your actual phalanges itself. We have gliding joints. In your wrist, they um, and between your your um, your carpals and your two arm bones, they can glide. And then we have a hinge joint in your elbow and in your knee where um, where the bones move. So um, for my class, this would these types of joints would be like on a matching or multiple choice question. I also have a video here for you. It's a nine minute video that I think will be helpful for you that you can watch as well. So I hope that's been helpful and I will see you in class. Hi guys, this is Mrs. Foy and this is a little screencast